You, I have no right. You scoot over. I'm more squished than you, my bro. No, uh, brother. Yeah, I'm touching. No, uh, dude, I'm touching cloth over here. Looks all right. Yeah. Hey guys, you're watching Ask Damp season two. My name is Chris. I'm Kurt. Can we get some soy sauce in here? We're gonna answer a whole bunch of questions for you today. Those of you that are not familiar with the uh, the concept of this, essentially, you guys send us questions. Uh, we randomly select them and we answer them. All right, you ready for that first yeah, question? Yeah, let's do that first question. Steve Decotio, Decotier asks, when are you opening a shop in Canada? That's a good question. Um, probably no time soon. Um, we do have a lot of requests to open shops in the US and since we're an online retailer, like technically it's not in our best interest to open a whole bunch of shops because of extra overhead. Um, however, with that said, we do partner with Fields and you know, other stores to get our products to them. So like if you are uh, looking for our products in say Canada and you have a local dealer that you deal with, have them reach out to us and we can then, um, they could purchase our products and carry our products in their store. So we're actually doing that with um, a couple, like a lot of dealers in the US. So we do have a wholesale channel for that. So yeah, recommend that. So never. Yeah. No, no. International laws and all that stuff would be Pretty crazy, like taxes and whatnot. So, so next question is from Valley Rebels Airsoft. Which is the better route, HPA or DSG? That really depends on what you like. Um, I personally would say HPA for me um, because you can theoretically have the same type of performance as the DSG uh, as far as like rate of fire and snappiness. Like you already have the snappiness, but. Um, some people don't like to wear, you know, use a tank or rely on the HPA system. So, you know, for some people, a DSG is definitely the way to go. Um, it's just all personal preference, you know. I don't know if you have a... I, you know, honestly, I personally go with, with the HPA. I really like, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of, a lot of systems in general, but uh, the Redline, uh, Airstock, and N7 Nelson are, like, to me, just peak performance. As a, a nearly thirty-year-old man, I just you know I, I I don't I don't have the time to learn new systems. You know HPA is just HPA dead and gone. You know, and that's that's definitely a big thing with um you know it all depends what you're looking for. Like the Milsim's awesome for people that aren't looking for rate of fire, and then you know obviously if you want rate of fire, go with you know something that has an FCU on it, and um, you can definitely get like fifty rounds a second if you want out of it with um, next to no maintenance, so. Don't need blazers if you hit them the first time. Yep. So, good. All right. <clears throat> Geo22 asks, what's the best gear set for good trigger response and rate of fire? Hmm. So, I'm sort of out to date on a lot of the newer, um, like, DSG techniques. I've never actually, like, Re, like went into that or built one myself. I do have like our tech is actually pretty savvy with that. Um, so I, I I know there's a certain ratio and a certain like uh, TPA for your motor that and actually I read it but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, so for the most part, the way I used to do it is I always you know you get your rate of fire or your um, your trigger response and rate of fire from obviously a combination of your motor, your gear ratios, and also the battery you're using. So like if you use 11.1 with a very snappy setup, um, then you're able to get that trigger response and that rate of fire that you're looking for. So I've... I've been sort of hearing yeah. that the SHSs are, are, like the gear sets are pretty solid with like a like an 11.1. I was maybe talking about that like last night and... But... That's like a weird, that's like a weird thing to think about because you're right. I haven't like it's I haven't built like an AEG in a minute. Yeah, it's like I'm like I'm very heavy with HPA stuff, and I, I made that <coughs> switch a long time ago, and that was before DSGs were really a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so like what I used to do in the the old like back when I ran my AEGs and before the DSGs existed, I would always I ran stuff a little differently. I would run. Um, you know, I would actually run a high-speed motor with a high-torque gear set, mm -hmm. and I would still be, you know, my rate of fire wasn't extremely high. Like, I'd be shooting, like, maybe 22 to 25 rounds a second tops, 
um, and that would give me a very snappy trigger response and it was just and it was a very efficient gun too like I would get that on like an 8.4 um, so but the, the techniques have changed so much over the years I mean that was literally almost 10 years ago at this point um, the other thing is with uh, you know with the to get your good trigger response and rate of fire, you have the DSG, which is like a whole different animal because it's, you know, it takes a different gear set, it takes a different piston, it takes uh, spacers, um, and all of that needs to be tuned specifically for that setup, otherwise you can run into issues. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend doing some research. I know like the Umbrella Armory guys, um, like Siege Tech gear sets are like some of the best from what we hear. But if you're going for budget, SHS is really good for the money. Also, like so. crazy enough, um, <clears throat> a lot of stuff that's coming out of like Crytek, like just Crytek stock guns, is like it, it's some of them have like the high torque and the motors are really like they're really good. They have the yeah. I think it's a 30k they, they right now. 30k. Like, 30k is like amazing, and so you can sort of like you can almost even. You know, I know what like a lot of Umbrella is doing. It's just you know taking a lot of the stock components, you know, slapping a Titan in there and, and fixing the the barrel and the hop. And honestly, so I would say I would say if you're looking for something, you know, maybe go like with Crytek. Maybe go with um, maybe try out the SHS. I, I haven't yeah. I haven't done it. And then I also hear if you can get your hands on some like Tokyo Marui gear sets, they are. I was gonna say the Star Wii motors as well. Yeah. Um, we brought those in, and actually we have a restock of those coming here shortly as well. Um, those have been like I know Umbrella used those pretty much exclusively for most of their stuff. I don't know if that's changed um, over the last year, but long story short, we don't really specialize in DSG builds. So like, we're pretty much just going off of our personal like experience. So I would definitely say you know do as much research as possible. Um, you know. There's tons of airsoft forums out there. I think Airsoft Mechanics, I think that's still around, which I'm pretty sure it is. Um, you can find all kinds of good setups, and I would recommend researching it, going into that, and looking at um, what works for other people. And then that way, if you have a whole bunch of people saying this works, as long as you do your research right and build it that way, <coughs> you'll get the, uh, the trigger response and rate of fire you want. Um, but for layman's terms, get a good gear set, make sure your gun can handle 11.1, Gate Titan MOSFET is really good, and that's your basic setup. You know, if you want to go beyond that and have like super rate of fire, then that's definitely going to take some research and some doing. So, next question Survive.Omega. When oh, is the next swap meet? Those are, um, so first off, Survive Omega is Frank Yuck and Alex Stortz, two dudes, and there's a ton of other people that are involved with that, but it's these great. Games that are like all over the country and they're based on like a two day survival, it's 48 hours of like true survival. Last time I went to one, I almost died. Um, but they are super awesome. They have an event uh, in April called Revenant and it is in Winnedo, Oklahoma during uh, tornado season. So they like to pick uh, times where you are not only contending with like other players. But you're also contending with like weather conditions, as you know, shown in our last event that we went to, which was Desolation up in Albrightsville, PA. Uh, we were in the mountains as Hurricane Michael rolled through, so that was also um, it was a super good time. So if you get the chance, I know like tickets are sort of like running pretty fast. They have a limited run on all of them, um, and this has nothing to do with the swap meet. But I just like to plug them whenever I can. Um, the next swap meet will probably be sometime in the spring. So late, late spring, late probably. spring. Um, we just had our end of year one, and it went really well. We had a lot of people come out, and we're gonna try to do a little bit more. You know, we we always have like a goal of like what we want to do with them, and I think that with each swap meet we get closer and closer to those goals. But then you know when we like reach those goals, we put new ones together and then try to get that for the next one. So. Never sort of satisfied. Like they always go really well, but I'm never sort of satisfied how they how they go because I'm like, I know we can do better. So um, next swap meet, give us a, a little bit of lead time, you know. Um, so probably so probably late spring. And I'd say um, I believe we have the pictures posted for the last one to give you guys a recap. I had a ton of people here. Uh, we had <clears throat> like how many sponsored like, we people had, came had to set up three tables? three sponsored tables. We had um, oh no, we had more than three sponsored. 
teams. Yeah, in Omega, we like... had um, a team that we haven't announced yet. We have Gun Gamers. We had Pit here. Uh, we had our friends from MC Caddx come down. Um, a couple solo players that we you know are, are going to announce in February. Um, and then uh, we had a, a couple people that like we've known for a while come out, you know, just as, as vendors and, and things like that. We had a, a bunch of awesome um, raffle items that were sent out. We had stuff from like G&G, &G, we had stuff from Wolverine, we had stuff from Redline, Redline yeah. and we had stuff, you know, from everybody and everybody. PTS sent some stuff out, you know. Um, we also, uh, we had the, the 5x5 shooting contest and we haven't taken it down yet because it's so fun. Um, <clears throat> but we have, you know, we had a lot of really cool stuff this this year, and it, the the turnout was awesome. Yeah, I was it gonna was say we had so many friends. We had like 30, 31 tables that were purchased by or table spaces that were purchased by players or people that were coming to take sell their stuff. So there was uh, thirty one tables for just people selling their used goods, um, on top of all the vendors and on top of the sponsored players. Um, we also had, I would say, there was probably throughout the day close to like between 250, 300 um, that have come through. Um, so it was like really awesome. I think our furthest person came from Santa Fe, which is amazing. Um, and then beyond that, we had people come from Wisconsin. So Michigan. I mean, people were driving 12 New York. plus hours. Yeah, New York, all the areas surrounding us. And um, there was something else too. Uh, just trying to think. Oh, uh, we had... Uh, for the five by five competition that we did, um, we actually there was probably about thirty five to forty people that competed with it, which was pretty cool. Um, so hopefully everybody liked it. We had top three prizes, uh, so three people walked away with some pretty cool prizes. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely do that next time as well, and uh, we're excited for the spring. That's so. This is a big one, Eric House next house. He screwed your name up. It's terrible. Eric from Gun Gamers asks, what are some of the unique challenges an airsoft retailer faces when competing in the current marketplace? So Whoa. this is a really good question that yeah. I sort of, okay, so my job here is I go to a lot of different places and meet with a lot of different retailers and players and companies all across the board. And one thing that I see all the way through, you know, like not only just like our struggle is there's a lot of right now we have industry trends that sort of like obviously pave the way for what everyone else is doing. There are innovations and there's changes that happen all the time, but a lot of the time you see a lot of different companies that are trying to do the same thing but better, and that's what business is. So it's really hard for us as like an airsoft retailer and, and, a, and, and producers of like, you know, product in the industry, um, it's really hard for for us to always keep our finger on the pulse with what's new, what's fresh, and what's exciting. So the way that we sort of get around with that, you know, like that we we try to instead um, we try to push the envelope on what we're doing as a company daily. You know, uh, um, it doesn't. You know, some things in the grander you know in the grander scheme of things you look at them and you're not quite sure what the change is but then when you get on the field and you see better air efficiency or you see longer lasting lines or you know higher durability of the sheathing or you know like more compatibility with different systems you see like that's that's where we sort of excel and you know the other thing is is to overcome any sort of challenge in industry, it's working appropriately, not only with like the people that are in your office, in your company, but it's also working well with like other companies that are either doing the same thing that you're doing or like, you know, have, have like great ideas to help change, you know, the industry in collaboration. Like, you know, we're, we're starting to work with like airsoft junkies and, and, you know, we have really good, I have a really good relationship with Aaron and, and, you know, we work with like a lot of, um, promoters. We have a lot of, you know, like ASR, you know, uh, Omega Productions and it, it's really, it's honestly the only way that you can really make it through this industry with any sort of challenge that you're going to face is, uh, is having a solid friend group to like 
help you out and help out. You know, like, they'll help you, you help them. And it's really just, like, that's pretty much, you know, there's a ton of unique challenges. Yeah. But that's how you get through it. Yeah. But one of the biggest things is since we are such a small industry, you know, we definitely have to, like, lean on each other, which a lot of retailers out there, or, like, a lot of businesses in general, the, the, the old school business practice is like, oh, they're my competitor. I can't do that. Or, like, we can't work together. Or, like, they're the enemy. And in Airsoft, it's very different. Um, and that's one thing we're trying to change on, like, from our perspective. Because it's like we enjoy working with other dealers. We enjoy working with competition. Um, you know, competition typically breeds better for the customer and the market itself. Um, so a lot of times whenever you have people that are competing all the time, they're just like killing each other. And then what's happening is like all these stores, like, I don't know if you've noticed, but like a lot of stores are going out of business and like, you know, over the past couple of years. And it's almost always because they can't compete or they're run out of like, the industry by bigger guys like you know evike or other people you know and then you also have the players themselves that are you know not shopping local they're going to say evike for everything and evike's a great company they, they have everything um but it's like if you have a small town you know dealer in your area definitely try to support them and nine chance out of ten they buy from evike anyway so like evike's getting their cut too so like you're still supporting them as well um, but instead of just supporting them solely, you're also supporting the small guys, like the local guys, um, like us or junkies or, you know, Redline or anybody. Um, one of the other big uh, challenges that we face is essentially censorship. Um, because of our industry, uh, you know, our toy, like our airsoft guns look like real guns. So when it comes to adverting, like we're not allowed to advert on Instagram. We're not allowed to advert on Facebook, Google, you know, like we have a lot of restrictions put on us that all of a sudden it's like, wow, you know, we say we have 30,000 followers. If we put a post out, maybe a thousand of you see it unless we pay them, but we're not allowed to pay them. So we promote. we're, yeah, that we're, we're uh, um, classified as a offensive material. So that's a big problem. Um, that used to not happen. So, you know, there's a lot of posts that, you know, say we put out or other retailers put out that are never seen by you guys. So make sure to always check on your local people um, with like Instagram and Facebook because you probably aren't seeing what they're posting. So if you can like check out their Facebook page and their other social medias, you'll start to see other things and then be like, oh, cool, this applies to me. I'm looking for that, or I want to, you know, use that special or anything like that. Um, and the, YouTube's the same way, you know, that literally we are censored and regulated, even though we're, we don't sell regulated items. And that's a very hard challenge because we're literally getting cut because we exist and not because of any other reason. So, um, you know what I think is funny? You know what I think is funny is that, like, I'm not going to name names, but I know some people that definitely, like, skirt around the YouTube, like, the YouTube restrictions by classifying as, like, not companies, you know, but, like, some players will, instead of putting themselves as, like, sport or fitness or, like, I don't think there's, like, a gun category in, but, like, they, they mark themselves as video games. So that's why a lot of times you see, like, you know, there'll be a Call of Duty thing on the bottom or, like, when they, the hit counts. Like, whenever somebody, oh, they, they yeah. do that because sometimes, yeah, so. It all depends on who's reviewing stuff, too. You yeah. know, one day you could have something apply or approved and have no problem, and then somebody else is moderating that day, like, say, for Facebook, and then all of a sudden it's a big issue. Yeah. Um, so it's it's the world we live in right now with everything going on. Um, i trying to think of some other challenges. I mean, there's always, you know, as far as unique challenges that are specific to Airsoft, um, just trying to keep everybody working together. Um, like I said earlier about, you know, retailers viewing competition as bad, um, is always just terrible, you know, just work together, everybody, you know, there's no, no reason customers should down any other retailer just because they like another retailer. Like we're all in the same sport. And if we, if the, the sport or the industry continues to do that, there won't be an industry, you know, like there'll be a couple people that sell airsoft and then guess what, you know, already actually one thing I wanted to mention it was very interesting. Um, we do a lot of like SEO work 
Um, like we do a lot of our SEO work in house, which is search engine optimization, which we've been working on a lot recently. And, you know, I've been teaching myself how to do it and everything. And like, for whatever reason, there's this massive trend going on where the, like I took uh, results from 10 different, like big name, like Evike, um, you know, pretty much all the popular airsoft retailers you could think of and plug them into, you know, the essentially Google ranking. And it's very interesting because everybody at the same time took the same hit. And I'm talking like thousands, well, depending on where they were at in the graph, anywhere from thousands of ranks lost. Like for example, Evike, they're very, they're like top 16,000 websites in the world. So, um, whereas like, you know, us, we're in the hundreds of thousands, but like talking hundreds of thousands of ranks lost and they all across the board, which makes me believe like, okay, why, why did this happen? And why is everybody showing the same type of correlation? And the only way that can happen is if it's like, oh, we're going to target this specific industry. So that's sort of scary, knowing that Google may be doing that. I'm not saying they are, but when you look at the numbers and the graphs, like it's like ear, eerie of how similar everything is. You do get very grassroots with sort of like how you yeah. campaign a lot of times, which is why, so. which is why, you know, we make more of a presence at, you know, events and stuff like that. We, we work through like a lot of different in like, you know, avenues of, of social media. And then, you know, but the, one of the things that really helps get sort of like butts in the seats is like going to an event, you know, um, we have a fair bit of events this year and, and, we're, you know, we try to go to all of them. I know I try to go, like I, I, try to get out to as many things as I can. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's all about, it's all about making like an appearance because that appearance is sort of going to be like the difference between, you know, you know, us, you know, about us or, like or you're not. Yeah. So for sure. So I, I hope that answers that question. I mean, can thanks you think Eric any? for a yeah. total, um, brain stump of a question. Yeah. Uh, and if you guys uh, don't, know about Eric and his uh, his lovely band of um, of uh, airsofters check out gun gamers on YouTube and Instagram and uh, uh, make sure to check out their home field of River City airsoft in ha ha Hammond New York maybe <laughs> so so someplace in New York but yeah thank you Eric um, Okay, we have next question. Jordan Guest 13. Do you think the VFC MP7 AEG will be out anytime soon? And do you think it'll be compatible with the MP7 kit or MP7 Polar Star kit that's made right now? You okay. Know more about so, because that's coming out soon. So, it's definitely. I don't know if we're supposed to say when it's supposed to come out, but yes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's soon. <laughs> um, so, from. I think it's, the Polar Star kit that they're talking about is the bingo kit. Yeah. I think that's, and like, from my assumption, yes. Yes. Because, yeah, supposedly the the MP7 AEG that's coming out is supposed to be token root compatible. Um, from what we hear, there's not been, a, like, a ton of information. Um, but we have been told that it is releasing sometime this spring. Um, Sooner so, than later. That's what we're supposed yeah. to say. So, that's what we're saying. Sooner yeah. than later. Yes and sooner than, No. Wait, put it the other way. Sooner than later, and then yes. That's it. All right, next question. Yeah, so. You're really not allowed to say too much about that, so. Um, Bubbles the Duct Tape King says, what is the best budget LMG? Hmm. Maybe the a &K? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to LMGs, if you're referring to, like, the Knight's Ornament LMG, or if you're just referring to just, any LMG, yeah. um, you know, a &K has very affordable you know, M249s, uh, you know, different support weapons of that sort. If you're looking for, like, a high-end, the, you know, Crytac has the, what they call the LMG, which is essentially the Shrike. An LMG upper. Yeah, it's a, it's a belt-fed M4. Yeah. Um, and then you have the Knight's Armament um, LMG, which actually, that's pretty affordable. They go for, like, 380 The only problem is they're sort of, like... How much was the G&G M249? Expensive. It's actually more than that. So... Uh. Yeah, the G&G, &G, they also have the, the Combat Machine uh, LMG, which is essentially the Shrike belt-fed M4 box mag. Um, but it is a Combat Machine, and I believe their price is about the same as the Knight's Ornament. So, 
I'm not too like I, I think it's a little expensive for what it is. But um yeah, I'd say your best budget would be probably you know, any like I would say the Knights Ornament L LMG if you can get it, if that's the type you're looking for. Or the A and K's. They're all gonna be under four hundred bucks. Um actually probably closer to like three fifty with the A and K's, so that's what I would say. You know what you could do? Buy yourself a uh Oh, how did we do it? And Average did it too. Get yourself like a peanut butter jar. Oh god. A barrel, some uh, hot glue. Uh, one of these, one of these guys, a tank. And I think you just need like the the, the compression, the compression valve off of like a like a tire fill, tire fill, something like that. And then just like push air into the into the peanut. Uh, dude, there's a whole video. Average like did it, and we did it too. Um, but. It's like a that dude that'll work, man. It's a flamethrower, practically. Yeah, it's, it it's a cool hurts. little thing, but it's yeah, you won't yeah. be able to really use it too much. I mean, um, you could, but it's not an LMG. So, next question, Tommy Temperio, favorite company for externals and favorite company for internals. Hashtag cream filled banana. Oh, I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> um, so, how about how about so, I take the first part and you take the second? Sure. I'm all about externals. Go for it. So, um, right now for externals, it's obviously, you know, like I'm a big fan. This is actually, um, this is sort of my gun right here. Uh, I love PTS, I love Magpul. Um, but those are pretty basic, you know, like when you're talking about, like you're talking about externals. Um, MC Kydex has some really stuff, like externally for, you know, like, uh, like they have for the 1330s. On the uh, air stock, they have like a nice cover for that. That's uh, something that I usually run. Um, Surefire stuff uh, is fantastic. Um, Angel Customs, I've had some experience with, and it wasn't terrible. Um, six millimeter here is the is one of my the one of my favorite six millimeter gun shops. Yeah, um, but honestly, um, I use a lot of stuff that is, you know. Not to sound bougie, but I use a lot of real stuff. Um, so I use a lot of Magpul. Um, I use a lot of like uh, the uh, the Battle Link. I use the I use the minimalist stock, like the MFTs. The MFTs, yeah. The B the 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 MFT like all that stuff is just awesome. You know, if you go like I, I never like to I never like to tell people like oh hey like oh hey go somewhere else, but like sometimes like. A deal is just too good to pass up, you know? Um, on top of hitting up our Black Friday sale, next Black Friday, uh, check out REI and Cabela's. And they got, like, the Cabela brand, like, foregrip. It's bomb, dude. <laughs> it's like, I've never... I, it was, it was like, 12 bucks, and I dropped it, uh, like, with my gun, and it didn't break. So, you know, that's good enough for me. But, but yeah, externally, I would say Magpul, um, favorite, one of my favorite companies, um, and uh, PTS. Two companies that are like, that are just killing it right now. They pretty much always kill it. Yeah, it's always pretty, pretty good. good. I mean, that's how I started with them, with yeah. Magpul. So. PTS is also getting, it's gotten like a lot cheaper too, you know, thanks to like some sort of creative. They've they've changed some manufacturers around a little bit, and um, they're coming out with like new material, and then they're also like reviving some old stuff. You know, there's like a lot of, um, like their like their silencers are like huge. You know, the uh, the QD silencers and suppressors. They are uh, like coming. There's going to be like a whole slew of them coming out within the next year, and they're. They're fantastic, you know, and, and they they're becoming more universal with like a bunch of different, you know, um, flash hiders and yeah. The one thing though I would say that like on this gun, you know, especially that everybody needs blue force gears. This little tether right here, um, they sell for about ten bucks, and you know, there's like a lot of different guns that are out there these days. Um, I use an LB. My voice keeps cracking. <clears throat> I use an LBX uh, two-point sling, and you know, um, it it's really tough when there's like you have a gun that you really love that 
you can't, you know, use the stuff that you love with it. And so Blue Force Gear makes a lot of stuff that helps you do that too. Yeah, he's talking about, they call it a U-loop. So it's essentially a, a sling adapter that you can pretty much put anywhere uh, that you have like a hole that you can put the, the loop through. Um, so yeah, they're pretty cool. But um, internally, I was gonna say, as far as externals as well, um, as far as the actual externals of the gun itself, like the body and the rail and all that, um, I've always been a big fan of the VFCs. And oh, yeah. when it comes to like a rail, Mad Bull's really good with the rails, but if you can get that rail as a VFC, mm -hmm. um, the PTS rails are awesome. Um, and actually, they just had a price drop, so you can get a rail for like 100 bucks, and it's like the wedge lock rails or mm -hmm. the Fortis rails, um, the CTA, I think it's the CTS Centurion rails, and some other things too. The Centurion X thing? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, as far as externals on that point, yes, I would definitely, I, I personally love VFC. I, um, yeah. King Arms used to make really awesome bodies too. They don't really make as many body kits anymore, but that's what my personal rifle is. Um, from way back in the day, it was actually an HK M4D, which was like a unicorn thing back then. But um, as far as internals, I really, really like, um, you know, for barrels, I like Orgas, uh, PDI, um, Prometheus, like you can't go wrong with any of those. Edgy 601s are awesome. Um, I love Prometheus gear sets. Siege Tech gear sets are awesome too. They're expensive, but they're like, I think they have a lifetime warranty. Um, you know, Prometheus makes great buckings, hop units, retro arm makes some really good external or internals, but external stuff. Um, you know, like triggers and that type of thing. Uh, their gearboxes are pretty awesome. Uh, hop units. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There's Crytek. Like, like I mean, Crytek. 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 The rotary awesome. hop is 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 yeah. phenomenal. Lonex. Pro win hops. Pro -win. We've always had good luck with those. Lalax, Lalax which is yeah. offshoot of Promi. Yeah, um, so. yeah, I mean, it really depends what you're looking for. Uh, GNP makes some awesome externals too. I forgot about them. Um, you know what I think is funny is that whenever we go to an event and you have like, you, cause you, cause you have like a lot of older guns that like you, you have some, some like kits that you've squirreled away for years and years and people always come up to you and like, yo, where can I get that? And you're like, yeah, you can't. Yeah, they don't exist. And, it, and then but. like, and then I'll get a, and then I'll get like an insurge of people being like, "Hey, I saw this guy at this event, and he had a knight's armament front end." And I'm like, "Damn it, Kurt." Yeah, I have a Voltor Casv rail on my gun and some other stuff. Um, I usually use like real manufacturer stuff on my, like whether it's Magpul or Voltor or, you know, anything of that sort. So, but yeah. Um, Hopefully that answered your question. Uh, also, internals, SHS. I forgot about them. They're literally SHS is some of the best budget budget internal parts you can get. And they have a wide variety. So Okay. Ready steady. Ready as a spaghetti. White boy Chris, any new fields popping up in WPA in 2019 that we should be excited about? Seems like the local scene is pretty dead. Yeah. Gotta travel out the state for yeah. anything good. Okay, so Locally, like, so, okay, we'll recap what's local right now, at least. Locally, for CQB, you have Battlegrounds. You have uh, Three Rivers Paintball, which is just, they host one event a month during not the winter. So um, you have Mercer Airsoft, which is north of Pittsburgh. You have OVA, which is another indoor, which is about an hour south of Pittsburgh. You have... Um, PA TAC does games in Ohio at Battlefront Paintball. That's about an hour and a half west. Um, who else? We're missing somebody. Well, we have... So, those are the existing ones. Um, I feel like we're missing somebody. There are some... Like, those are, like, the most notable ones, I would say. Because there are think, other I groups... I think Urban that, Assault does, like, a... Well, they haven't even started Once yet. a Once in a, a billion years, they do one. Yeah. So... Um, oh, there's uh, that's, Orchard that's Valley new. Orchard Valley Christian Academy um, does an event every so often. Oh, uh, Christ Christ Church at Grove Farms they do one as well for their youth group. That was so I that's think not that's one I was thinking. Yeah, about. I just messed there's, it all yeah, up. Yeah, there's so they do it. It's not necessarily public. It's for their youth group, but they actually have a lot of people that go. Um, but then again, they have like over a thousand members at their church, so it's crazy. Um, so we sometimes try to go to there to help them out. Um, 
actually just Robbie, um, their youth group minister, actually just messaged us. So I had to hit up him, but we're probably going to try to help there more. We have did a couple times this past year, um, just got busy. And it's sometime, like I think they do it every couple months. So, um, so yeah, I think that is all the current builds. Now, as far as for like 2019, um, this weekend we have a game at Will it be still... up this weekend? I don't, I don't think this will be up this weekend. What? So I think this will be up next Oh, week. yeah, sorry. So, so what we're doing, this, like this, I guess what would be this weekend past. Yeah, so essentially when you see this, it'll already have happened. Um, but this weekend, before we filmed, or before you guys see this, um, this upcoming weekend, we have a, an event at Stilltown Paintball which the owner of it reached out to us and they wanted us to do an event there and to bring Airsoft to them. And he just took over the field this past fall. So like it's very paintball filled right now. Um, but he actually owns a pallet company and is willing to build anything and everything. So we actually gave him like a design to go off of and he's looking to make an entire city. Um, and he has a lot of property it, like there's a lot of open property that we could convert to cities and it would actually, if he does it, there's like over a hundred plus buildings that like on this plan. Um, so if he had do that and finish it, it would be pretty sweet. So we're having this event to sort of like introduce people to it and introduce him to airsoft in general. So it's sort of more of like a, we are calling it demo days cause we're literally demoing the field. It's an awesome field. Yeah. It's, it's cool. Like I said, it, it's, I'm interested to see how it plays out because it is very paintball-y. So to see how that transfers over before anything's built. Um, so like that, by the end of 2019, that field could be a massive local field. It's 20 minutes from us or 20 minutes. It's like within Pittsburgh, practically um, very close. So, um, so that's happening. There may be some other paintball fields that are looking to do airsoft as well. Um, and they're sort of trying to decide what they want to do with that. Um, other than that, I mean, there's really, that's like all I know about or all I've heard about. Yeah. There's some stuff that's like, and like that's opening up and I always forget which one's the, the Cincinnati is like really far from us. It is. Cleveland's closer, right? Cleveland's not way closer. They're both pretty far. Oh, there's, well, yeah. If you want to go for a real drive, um, <clears throat> Odin's, there's Odin's Lake paradise, but there's us, I think like two hours is like Cleveland or something. But Cleveland has um, like a new field opening up that Lane Russell, uh, the BB Warrior, is doing a lot of events at. Lane Russell, the BB Warrior, is doing an event up in Cleveland. Um, he's got a couple within the year. Um, so like, there's the, you know like obviously around Pittsburgh, there's a weird like you can't really find any place like within the city limits except for BG and uh, you know of course this new Steel Town place. But, you know, if you're willing to travel an hour, maybe two, there's tons of stuff in the area. So yeah. And then there's always local stuff, too. You know, there's um, local players that, you know, have events every once in a while that will post up on Facebook. And so that's that's really it beyond, like, national events and stuff. So hopefully that'll change. Like, hopefully this year, hopefully, you know, with still town, hopefully if that gets going, um, that'll be sort of a dedicated place to play. Um, you know, he's... It's actually really cool. The, the owner's very open to anything. Um, he's very excited. Yeah, he's very excited. You know, he's looking for, you know, bringing airsofters on as part of his business. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Like I said, it's his first year owning it. Um, it's been open for a while, but, like, he bought it from the other owners, and they wanted to get out of it, so he's sort of getting into it. So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we have a lot of awesome news or a lot of awesome places to play in 2019 it's just we'll see what happens so um next question survive dot omega what events are you most excited for in 2019 those are those omega boys again yeah um so i know what i'm excited for for 2019 and I know you've got a couple of things you're excited for for 2019 um so obviously i'm excited for Desolation in June, which is going to be nice. Um, I'm excited for a Trench Knife, which is next month. And I think I'm also just excited. Like, we've got a huge roster. I think I think it's like, I think we're looking at about like maybe 
two new teams, adding two new teams on, three, four, four new solo players, maybe one more team to that for our sponsorship program. So I deal with all of our sponsorship stuff. And yeah, a lot of good dudes and ladies that we're, that we're bringing onto the, onto the squad here. And um, I think I'm excited. I think, I think I'm excited for that. I'm also, we're going out to um, the Midwest a fair bit this year. Which means that we'll be rolling through Culver country. Oh yeah, and I love Culvers, man. Some good stuff, dude. I, that's so. That's actually that's, um, that's like a, a thing that that a lot of a lot of uh, you know us uh, us that travel for airsoft, you know, in the industry, we have like a secret sort of um, like a like a secret cult where we talk about who has the best um, fast food fried chicken. And uh, Virginia's got us like Virginia's Virginia like the South Bojangles was super solid. Um, oh god, it was so the biscuits were like I don't know. I didn't go on that one. Dude, but the, the biscuits were were they were like spicy, but they were still like they were good. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm excited for. I'm excited to find another Bojangles and and in and out. I like fast food, so traveling for the fast food. And uh, you're probably gonna say something that's more like, like, about the company. But I'm all about making this bigger. So, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say with me, um, pretty excited. I mean, we're going back to Shot Show this year uh, at the end of this month, and um, sort of excited to go there as media. So this will be our first year doing that. So we'll get to interview people and have some content, um, and then just sort of hanging out, meeting everybody. Um, so that I'm sort of I'm really excited about. I am excited about Trench Night because I've never been to a Third Coast event yet. So it'll be sort of cool to see what that's like. Um, excited to see what uh, Lion Claws has in store. They actually have a lot of like East Coast stuff coming up again um, at some pretty cool places. So we'll see what that's about. Um, would like actually I would like to at some point this year I want to go to a Milson West insurgency game because I actually watched it popped up on my feed and I'm like you know what I never really like looked into it um, but I've been hearing a lot about it and uh, the swamp sniper did this amazing like four-part series on like his experience there and um, it was just really cool um, so I'm before the end of the year I'd like to sort of do something like that um, this is um, Sado. Yeah, Which Msado. Be, we have we Msado coming up. 140 sponsored players going. Holy cow. I didn't yeah. that. Um, so, yeah, those are, I would say those are probably my my big ones I'm looking forward to. Any NAT ops are fun. Um, I just like hanging out with everybody. Um, especially now that we have, like, the sponsored guys there. It's really cool because we go and it's like we have family there and uh, get to hang out and just have fun. So, Kurt really likes whenever we go to, like, we meet up with DH6 and they have macaroni salad. Oh, yeah. They always cook. So, yeah, they do. from DH6, uh, so one of the guys on the team, his wife, makes phenomenal macaroni salad. Like, like I had a I had a bunch of it, and I was really bummed out that I didn't get to bring any back. But okay. I, had so, I had so much of it at that party. And I was like, because they were like, oh, yeah, there's, like, we put a bunch aside for Kurt. And they, I went to a Christmas party, and they literally made Kurt like a big bowl, and then I had to leave it because I didn't have a I didn't have a refrigerator in my hotel room, mm. and so there was like a little mishaps, and then I sad face. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. So I guess that's pretty much all those. We'll probably move on to the next one. And... So we have a there. lot in there still. Oh, Levi Lacrone. If you guys don't know who Levi is, he's uh, he's part of ASR. He's one of he's. There's, there's two guys who really spearhead um, uh, Airsoft Republic events, and they are sort of, like, bringing big nat up and, and like, like super cool function to, to games in the Midwest. Um, so keep an eye out on them. At Airsoft Republic, I think their first event this year is Sleepy Hollow, and it's uh, it's an, a completely night-based event. And we if you guys are, you know, in the Des Moines area, um, make sure to head on over there because we will be there. We'll be vending and... We'll actually be role playing on the streets. Um, favorite event you have ever been to? Oh, there's a lot of questions on Holy here. Holy cow! He asked. Well, okay. Okay. Let's get on the list. Okay, so 
Favorite event you've ever been to, piece of gear you wish you had, piece of gear that you used. Let's go. So, okay, favorite event I've ever been to, it was probably that the first time, I think it was like my first Irene, because it was the first time I ever saw anybody using a vehicle for mm. like airsoft thing. And then there was that, like, I remember you being very adamant about like, this was years ago, like maybe 12, no, 12 years? Oh, I don't know. A little Probably bit more than a decade. You were like, bring Nutrigrain bars with you. Oh yeah. And I was like, why? And then I got like a bunch of a bunch of guys just like, they were like, we're gonna kill you unless you give us like food. And I was just like, oh here it is. And I'm just like pulling out stacks of Nutrigrain bars to like you know they let me go. Yeah, back then there was a lot of role play. Um, so yeah. like, you know, one of my first things was um, Northern. Wind, I think it was off Northern Wind in New York, Ransomville. It was like a um, National Guard base of some sort. But um, you know, that was probably my that was like my first NAD op I've ever went to, and it was very cool because it was like you know they had this whole NPC element or this role play element, and you know we had to go in and like I randomly stumbled upon them with me and my buddy and. Uh, just the, the stuff that they had us do, you know, like they disarmed us, they took us in a room, they interrogated us, and like, we had no idea what was going on. You know, we didn't even know that was part of it other than we needed to control this town. So we like persuaded them to let us in there and like, that's one of the ways I was able to do it. I was able to give him like some of my food and promise him things and it was really cool. So that was like my first event that I was like. You didn't tell me, in. like, you didn't tell me to like ration it out though, so I gave him all of my uh -oh. food. <laughs> So yeah, like... depends depends who you're dealing with, but yeah, I would say beyond that, um, Irene was always fun. You know, just having it at Zussman, the amount of pyrotechnics was just awesome. Um, and probably my other favorite, maybe playing in the mall at um, Wisconsin or in Wisconsin. What was it, Wilmington? Was... Mm, it's like Northridge Mall or something. Something like that. So I was there twice, and that was that was really awesome. So there's like a mall yeah. around here that they're they're trying to get to do in our Yeah, that'd so. be cool. Fingers crossed. So next question: piece, piece of gear you wish you had. You know, I don't know. That's because I usually, I pretty much have everything that I want. But I guess I guess if I had to if I had to pick one, it'd probably be a pair of combat pants that fit the way I want them to. Yeah, I always end up like tailoring out stuff because I don't like I don't like the way like. I know some people come in and they expect their combat pants to be like skinny jeans, and I'm, I I don't. But like, as long as they're not getting caught, you know, I like them to be I like them to be a little you know, fit friendly. So I usually end up going like, either a size down and then, like, taking out the the waist, the old the old pregnant lady trick, throwing a little elastic in the uh, oh the waist God. there, or I um, or I break I take in the leg, which I'm super bad at. But um, yeah, probably just like a like a pair of combat pants that fit, and then like one of those um, like the admin pouches, but you can put your mags in them. Mm. Cool. So yeah. So for me, piece of gear that I would love to have, um, I usually run green. So after having a pair of multicam like Cry combat pants, I would love to have an actual pair of Cry Woodland combat pants but like you're talking like eight hundred dollars with a ripped crotch on it like with like special forces blood on it or something like mm -hmm. it's and they go for that much and like it's insane so i'd never spend that on a pair of pants that's like beat up have you um, ever tried the lbx's i have not so or actually i have lbx just not the woodlands they're so. fire man i don't know i love the way the cry fit it's my favorite pair of combat pants but Beyond that, I really wish that I would have the ability, this is gonna be funny. Like I wear boots, I wear like Lola's or original SWAT. Oh my um, god, I know what you're gonna say. But yeah, I, I would love to have, like if they made a boot toe shoe, like that'd be freaking amazing. Cause I, I love toe shoes. I mean, I've been wearing them for like 10 plus years now and I have a wand right now. But um, the one biggest problem with them is they are not waterproof. They did make waterproof ones, but they're not like, they're not available anymore. And on top of that, like just the idea of running through the woods or dangerous environments where, you know, having boots on is definitely safer. Um, I would 
you know, probably not wear them. But they are great for CQB. I love them for CQB. You know who wears toe shoes? Who? My mom. Uh, well, next question. <laughs> Piece of gear you use most that is most underrated. Two words. Gut flap. Um, Engage Tactical made me a special gut flap that had, like, a little bit of Velcro, two things, well, actually, like, four setups for, for glow sticks, um, and, uh, I get chem lights, chem lights, mm. before I get torn apart on YouTube for that, and then it has a little pocket for, um, that I use for cigarettes, and I can keep grenades in there. And then, uh, you know, like I have this little little paunch right here and usually, like most plate carriers hit right here. So this is the danger zone. This is like where, you know, like I'm getting hit in the belly meat and thank God I have this like little pouch. It's my, it's my, my, my money maker is right here. You know, that's, that's what needs to be protected most. So, you know, he, he made it in like a nice, Thick. I keep shifting in these chairs because they are not comfortable. But the, uh, the 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 belly protector, the gut flap, I, it, uh, a, a dangler, mm. a dongle, dongler, dong. Yeah, when so I asked him names. for it, I was like, hey, um, I wanted to buy one of your dangles, and he's the first thing he said. He's like, I think I don't think he had ever heard like somebody call it that. And he's like, I think my wife would have issue with me sending you my dongle. <laughs> I was like, all right. So, what about you? So, I mean, like, trying to think of it, and probably the one thing that I put on all my stuff is going to be a Magpul RVG. Um, I was trying to think, and I'm like, what do I use the most? And it's like, looking at all my rifles, like, all of them have that. Um, and that's, like, if I don't have it, I don't like it. Um, so, I would say probably that piece of gear is the greatest because it allows me to use, like I'm not a big fan of angled foregrips or anything, but I use that as sort of like a hand stop and I sort of use a, you know, when I grip my rifle, it's like I half grip the grip and I half grip the rail. And it's just very easy to transition and do stuff with like that. Um, as far as like actual underrated, um, I would say actually the brain exploder, GoPro mount. Um, because like for my helmet that's sitting right here. Um, because with that, like, I see so many people have to, like, rearrange their GoPro or it gets hit and then, like, their footage is bad. Like, I've just had it on there, put it on there, and just leave it on there um, whenever I don't need to, like, switch it out or anything. But you just put your GoPro on, you push it down, you hit play or uh, record, and it's done. You know, like, that is probably the most important piece of gear for me because if I need to get gameplay footage, I want it to work. Otherwise, I just wasted the entire weekend because of something that didn't mount correctly. So, that's that. Gun um, you wish you could get. For me, I would love, 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 love. Like the, so I love uh, M14s, like Tokamurui. I have a Tokamurui SOCOM M14, which I've literally been waiting for an offset HPA unit, which I really wanted... Like I had my eyes on the F1 whenever it had the offset, and then I was like thinking about the Inferno or the Hydra, and then I was like, ah, I'll just wait, because I wanted to have something that was like a fusion engine, because I use the fusion engine in like all my guns, um, and then they came out the F2. So then I actually just built one or an EBR two weeks ago, and it like shoots amazing. So like I'm super excited to put that F2 in mine, but the thing I would like to get is I would like to mod that to fit a real Voltor mod stock for the M14. Because I have a real M14, which I'd like to get that stock for, but if I could, I would actually like to put it on the airsoft thing, or gun, because I'll actually use it more, um, but have the ability to take it off and put it on my real one. So I'd like to modify the airsoft proponent to fit into the gun, the real one, without modification. Um, but that's like my dream setup. That was sort of inspired by Division, sadly. But yeah, the Voltor mod stock with the Voltor Casv with an M14 SOCOM. That's that's it. Uh, I think for me, I really want like an LMG because they're always they you know they they always have the best jobs in airsoft. They're usually laying down, waiting. They're not running around. Well, I mean, whenever I whenever I run into them, I'm like, I bet you've been there for like an hour. Just doing whatever, you know, taking a snooze. Depends Dig how they play. Digging holes, laying in them, you know. I'll lay in the mud. That's fine. 
No, but uh, I I always see people who have like really cool like LMGs like like the like uh, there was a guy that had like an M60 at the swap meet and I was like I want that. So probably probably an M60 and two forty nine. What's your favorite camo pattern? Uh, favorite camo pattern? M81. Woodland. I'd say Woodland. And if it's not Woodland, uh, Special Forces Vietnam Tiger Strike. That's my favorite. ATAX FG. There you go. Yeah. That was good. That's, that's, I really like that one. Um, favorite role to play on the field? So, okay, this is, like, like this is probably going to be, we're probably going to wrap it up after this. But I wanted to say that, like, before you answer this question, I like how whenever we go to an event, everybody wants you to like lead mm -hmm. and you turn around and like we were when we were at like Lion Claws, you turn and you look at me like dead in the eyes. You're like, I hate this. <laughs> like everybody wants you to be like like CEO and you're like, yeah. no, please. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> not me. Um I think you I just like I, I always So I yeah. will I will lead a squad. Like I don't mind being squad leader, but I like whenever you put me into this, you know, oh, you need to be platoon leader and this and that, it's not my play style. I like to get up close and personal or be a support element for my team. You know, whether that's like a DMR or using a rifleman like a DMR, um, because my guns do shoot pretty far. Um, but yeah, for the most part, like you're gonna see me in the action um, up front or very close to it. So that's... I always usually sort of do like, you know, Overwatch, um, sort of like recon esque. I, you know, my favorite kit to run is my my racket kit. So I end up like uh, I. Kurt likes running with the group. I like running by myself. You know, I the, I'll sort of disappear for a couple hours, and you, you'll hear my voice or see me pop up somewhere. And um, you know, I I have I have a battle buddy, and that's pretty much most of the time what I need. So yeah, I, I usually like to run. You know, D I run a DMR a lot of events, and you know, at Cryptic City, I was up on top of a tower with another another um, uh, DMR, and we just sort of that was that was like a lot of what the game was for me was just disappearing and shooting from far away. Yeah. So, Ty, uh, Kalsmer, 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 uh, what's the best AO you played? At what point did you realize airsoft is not a child's game? We pretty much covered the AO portion. Um, child's game. I mean. I was into paintball before, and like I never really construed it as a child's game because I was a child when I started. So, probably the first time I rode in a helicopter. Next question: What's Amp's backstory? So, long story, short. Um, Amp's backstory essentially started out of the back of my car. No, I actually started in fourth grade selling creepy crawlers. Um, made profit. My grandma made me save that money. Um, fast forward through college, I played airsoft, um, started teching out in my house, essentially my mom's basement and my dad's house. And I would, you know, was a big part of like the local community and we had like a lot of games back then, a lot of places to play. And, um, we, you know, I would tech on guns, did that for quite a while. Um, fast forward a little while, uh, once I started college or after I started college, Worked for a local shop called Cool Stuff for like a month. Um, did their tech work for a while as like one of their, one of three techs. Um, then we ended up, I went, that was for summer break. I was like there for a month. And then I started band camp, uh, came back, you know, decided that like working there, um, essentially I wasn't able to work there and go to school and also play airsoft. So I was like, okay, you know, so I took a step back from actually working there professionally, um, went into, that's whenever sort of like Amped was born. Um, Cause I was like, I'll just do this part time, continue with the, the teching stuff. Cause I had a lot of customers requesting special parts for the tech stuff I was doing. Um, and then also the games I'd go to, they would request, you know, BBs and magazines and that type of stuff. Um, so I started buying from Red Wolf, set up accounts. Um, I had, Paul and Merck, um, which Paul's still in the community. Um, Merck has been sort of in and out. So he's, I haven't M talked to him in a while. Yeah, the M&P. So like Paul's Amped come sort back of, and get that piece on yeah. So Amped actually stand, stood for Angus, Merck, Paul was the first three letters. Um, and then essentially that went on. Um, 
Merck decided to get out. Paul was out of the sport, back in the sport for a while. He actually came back to work for me later. Uh, he got back out of the sport, and then he got back in, and now he's working with uh, Battlegrounds. Um, and pretty much through that whole time, like I started out of the back of my car, we'd always go to events. Um, pretty much from 2007 to 2010 was completely mobile out of my base, like my mom's basement practically. Um, and then in 2010, we got our first retail shop, which was at, on Library Road. Uh, I used that money from my creepy crawler savings to put the down payment for that. So that was cool. Um, thank you, Grandma. And from there, we essentially just grew. We started buying different parts of the building. Like we actually, by the end of it, or by the end of our time there, we had three suites of the building. So about like 5,000 square feet. We started with 1,500. Um, outgrew it. And then we decided to find where we're at now, moved all of our operations over here, kept both like our operations here, the store open there, did that for a year. And then we decided to make the store here, consolidated, um, shut that down over there, moved everything here. And then we've been here for the last three years. Um, and we obviously started doing um, online sales as well, which that's like sort of what we're known for with HPA and everything else. So that's sort of like the very, very quick history of like, Point A to point B. Um, and I showed up some point, and that was it. Yeah. So there's a lot more, too. Like, there's, you know, we were involved with, like, an indoor place, and there was, you know, we got involved with HPA. We went from teching to HPA-style stuff, and then went to online, and then just everything went from there. So, um, but yeah, if you're ever, I know that's from Josh McNeil. Um, MC Kydex. Yeah, MC Kydex. So, like, if you're ever around, like, I can tell you everything. Uh, so, Chris Levy. Pros, cons, and expense of running different types of platforms, AG versus gas versus HPA, cost not getting into it, but upkeep parts, et cetera. Um, so. Probably the least expensive. Like, if you get into it and you're, you're like, <clears throat> set, um, HPA, probably the most expensive would be gas. Yeah, I mean, with gas, you're looking at an expensive platform to begin with. Uh, yeah. The magazines are super expensive. Um, AG um, can definitely be expensive with upkeep later. Mm -hmm. It's less to get started. Um, HPA is more to get started with less upkeep later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say gas is probably your definite, like, most expensive. Most expensive so. But you also get the most realism. Yeah. So. so. Um, do you hope Magpul PTS returns and at least for the P mags? Funny story. Um, the P mags are probably never going to return yeah. from PTS at least. However, um, we did just sign on with Murder Mags, and they are pretty much the PMAG. Like, if you look at them, they are very similar to the PTS PMAGs from before. Um, so we'll actually have those coming in. So definitely check them out. Um, wait for, like, if you want uh, to buy them through us, you know, wait for our announcement. We'll definitely put it out there. But those, I'm sort of excited to get those because they, they look nice. I hear they perform very well. And they, I actually have some of the Gen 1 PMAGs from PTS, so I'll be able to compare them. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely excited. Lane Russell, what barrel and hop-up should I put in my Polar Star build? You don't. No, well, actually. I would say, go ahead, just do it. He, just do it. We, we don't mind barrel barrel questions. Yeah, That no, was always ahead. a running joke before. But, um, so, like, with a Polar Star, our go-to that we've been doing forever and ever 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 and ever. Um, is essentially a Firefly or some sort of flat hop nub. We use a Promi Purple, although now they have a Promi Blue, which mm -hmm. is a flat no or a pre-flat hopped bucking, which actually works really well. I put that in M14 last week. Um, for an M4, we usually go with Pro Win. However, there are Ultra Retro or also Retro Arms. There's the Prometheus Chambers. There's Lonex, um, and actually the Max Hop, which we're going to start carrying as well. I haven't. Like, I hear great things. I haven't gotten to test it myself. Um, and then as far as barrel goes, it's completely up to you. Um, the 623 is nice. Uh, if you want more efficiency, you can't go wrong with the PDI 601, Promi 603, Edgy 601, Orga, um, Orga 605, or 613, any of those sizes. Um, and also don't forget barrel or rings because that locks everything down. Um, so personally, what I run in mine, I have... PDIs, I have Orgas, and I have Promi Barrels, and those are the ones I've been running. But, I mean, I haven't changed them for years, so that's sort of what I'm running. Little Wes Official asks, who do you love more, 
Little Wes or regular Wes? Also, who do you always choose as a starter Pokemon? Uh, I like regular Wes. I, I, Little Wes, I mean, his hair. Dude, his I hair. like regular Wes's hair. I mean, and regular Wes has, like, he's, he, I don't know if you noticed, but he came in with, like, the same shoe, but a different color for Christmas. And he, like, tried to act like it wasn't a big deal. And it was. It was like, really? It was pretty, it I was pretty that. fire. It was pretty. Uh, starter Pokemon, I like Charmander. Oh, dude, you do. That's so busted. You're so, you're such a, I always go with, uh, I always go with Squirtle, because Blastoise is endgame. Alphonse Colas, uh, you may have heard that name before. How do you be Airsoft Sniper? Just like that. Um, you buy an LMG, you put a Polar Star in it, and you just go to town. All right. For serious, though, <laughs> if you are looking to be an Airsoft Sniper, there's definitely options out there. Um, expect to spend money, though. Because it, like you can get like a starter sniper rifle, but it's not going to be glorious unless you really, 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 really like using bold actions and not having the range you think you should. Um, but if you are looking for stuff, I know like um, Novrich, like he has his SSGs, which actually I've seen them and they actually shoot really good. They're pretty. Solid. They are expensive, but for the price, you do just get it. Like it's ready to go. Um, if you're looking for cheaper stuff, uh, Tokenru VSR tens are like godly. Um, they have a lot of upgrade parts for them. They Slam bolt in that boy, and you yeah. HPA'd that, John. You could HPA stuff, too, um, but that's where the price gets up there. So that's that's the, the way to go about that. Um, what is the best body for AR-15 for Project with Polar <laughs> polar Staff F2? Uh, polar Star F2, what is the best mid-caps on the market right now? This is actually from Mark Off Mihail. 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 Um, so best body... For AR-15, especially if you're going with like a Polar Star or any other V or any other HPA, VFC. Yeah, they're made for VFC style bodies. So, I would say VFC. Um, you can also do GMP, and G and G bodies also work as well. But if you're looking for full metal, I would say stick with the VFC because they drop in very nicely. Um, and mid best mid caps. You so that's like that's a tough question because you and I both use K120s. Well. But you use the uh, ones. Yeah. Yours have yours have mag springs in them, mag and I have maple springs in them. No. Yep. So um, straight like off the market stock like boom bada bing, it's the amoeba mags. The oh, one yeah. with the built-in mag pulls into them. That they are expensive. awesome. They're expensive, but they're awesome. Also, the uh, the elite force mags are like they feed really well and, and they're you know, you inexpensive. Just, but you know, straight up, if if we're just gonna like be like, what's the best mid cap on the market? The EPMs, yep. PTS EPMs, you just can't beat them. Andy Pitlack, Prometheus is the best barrel manufacturer. Changed my mind. You're not necessarily wrong. Yeah. Um, Promy for a six oh three is your run of the mill. Everything is good about it. Um, I personally like PDI six oh ones. I really like their stainless. Um, however, their when their hop window is a little little small. Josh Torres says, "How to expand the 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 grow of airsoft and help your community stay positive and healthy in numbers and attitudes. Be positive and healthy. That's honestly yeah. the biggest one. Just you know, don't be toxic. You can have a a bummer of a field, but as long as you guys are having a good time, you know, playing on it. That's honestly the best way to help your community is be positive, be non toxic." And, you know, like the marker says, smell nice. Support everyone you can, unless they, like, wrong you. And if they do wrong you... Never let them forget Make it. sure... Well, no. Make sure, like, if you have an issue, go to the people that you have the issue with. Like, you know, for example, if you buy a gun from us and say, like, you get it and it's like, you know, something's wrong with it, it doesn't work right, come to us. You know, we'll make it right. We'll talk to you. And instead of, like, a lot of times what will happen is people go straight to the forums and like oh amp there's off sucks because this gun's broken and it's like well no this happens to everyone like we literally get brand new guns out of the box we pull it out of the box to show the customer because they're ready to buy it and it's like oh wow okay it's broke this is a brand new gun out of the box okay we'll go get you another one and then we have to literally rma that back to the manufacturer and sometimes you don't find that out until you literally take it out to go over everything with the customer. Um, so like, that's not our fault. And, you know, but when that happens, we make it right. So just remember the more people that paint airsoft in a negative light, the less people 
are going to play it or want to get into it. And a lot of things are easily fixed by conversation. We're here to help you and other retailers. They don't want to like piss you off. They want to help you. So like if you have a problem, make sure to talk to them. Um, Cause that just kills all the drama and it's just way better that way. Um, it's pizza time. Go for it. Um, did you find it, fr do you find it frustrating when a company only puts out, and I want to answer this one because I got a really good answer for this one. Only puts out one variation of a model, an example being the VFC Cybergun MCX, since the real one has hundreds of configurations. No, because you know why it has a hundred of configurations is because people make those configurations themselves. What is awesome about Airsoft and VFC and all, you know, the, the you know, every single industry that is, you know, out in the world is that it relies on people like you to make it better. So if you buy a VFC, this is a VFC. This is not how we bought the gun. That's not how the gun came. You know, you can make it into anything you want. You just have to either find somebody who can do it for you or better yet, learn how to do it yourself. You know, front ends, mod kits, everything, you know, everything and anything can all be swapped out and changed. So, you know, you shouldn't have, you know, if you want a special gun, you shouldn't have, you know, stock anything on it. Make it what you want it to be. This is Play-Doh, clay, whatever, you know, metaphor you want to use. You make it what you want. That's why VFC doesn't go, you know, huge lengths to make these 101 different specialty kits because they know that there are like so many different brands out there that you can add on to there. You can make your own personal weapon. There is one gun for every 11, 11 people on the planet. And there are so many different brands that fall into that, that category, you know? So like how can you expect a small budding industry to make every single gun that every single person wants? You can't, but they'll make you the platform so you can make it yourself. Next question. Okay. Josh McNeil asks, where did HPA start? How are companies being proactive in making new innovative AEG designs? So funny story, HPA actually started in 1980-ish, somewhere in the 80s. Um, Tokumarui introduced their classic rifles, um, which were, they actually ran on green gas tanks that they attached to the gun, essentially. It's, as far as I can remember or recall, they had some weird things, but they were gas powered airsoft guns before the AEG came out. So Tokumaru was the first to actually do the AEG. Um, as far as like current HPA, um, Polar Star was the first one. They actually came out with the Fusion Engine back in 2011-ish, 2010-ish. Um, and that's sort of where we jumped on with them. Um, and then since then, I mean, you have Wolverine, you have Vulcan coming out with them, you have Redline, um, you had Protec, which they're gone. Um, and there's uh, some overseas companies like the um, the Mancrafts. Mancrafts, yeah. Um, there's a couple other smaller ones. That I've, yeah, I've heard something about that. But yeah. like, there's like very small niche things that aren't exactly mainstream yet. Um, but as far as how how companies or how are companies being proactive in making innovative AG designs, um, they are actually moving towards trying to get the. Recently, they've been trying to get like the full recoil realism EBDRs. that you would get out of a gbb like a gas blowback into an aeg there's so the like tokyo the, marui there's the kwa there's GBLMS. the pts gblms or gblms gbl yeah um there's a ton of different you know electric blowback recoil shock style you know guns that are coming out now but then also um there's a lot of different companies that are you know like you look at titan um like the gate titan uh is way to build rate of fire and it's really it's honestly it goes down to the whole like question about like you know vfc you know how like does it frustrate you blah 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 it's not it they're giving you tons of things that you can put into your gun to make it just yep. you know shoot lasers and on this on the note of hpa i don't know if it was meant to say making new innovative hpa designs but no it was you know to compete yeah. yeah but with hpa you have all the people like Polar Star, Wolverine, Redline, like they're all coming out with their own unique like solutions to problems. Like for example, Wolverine came out with their CO2 race stock. Um, Polar Star is on the verge of releasing their um, their 4500 psi tank stock, you know, which is gonna be pretty sweet. It's gonna be pretty awesome. Um, they have some other stuff that they're announcing shot uh, announcing that shot show. You have mechanical versions of HPA stuff that is completely, you know, it doesn't rely on batteries. Um, you know, 
all kinds of stuff. And every new company that comes out or existing companies as they compete with each other, come up with solutions for new or old problems with new things. So is there one more question? Last question. Brayton asks, what are your thoughts on Mir, Airsoft Public, AMS, Milson West, and other national and local event organizers? And where do they fall in beginner level to expert? So here's the thing. Right now, a lot of people that are doing events in the United States have been in the circuit for a while. So there's really no such thing as like a beginner level, you know, um, event promoter because if you're getting like any sort of notoriety, chances are you've been doing this for a bit. But what I would say, some of the top ones that I really enjoy going to is Milsim West, ASR, you know, AMS, MSATO, Lion Claws. I think they're a fantastic group of dudes that do, you know, amazing different games. And then, you know, there's some stuff that, like, I really love doing uh, Omega Productions because I like the danger aspect of it. Um, sort of categorizing a lot of different companies in this sort of, like, niche of, like, oh, I like this one more than I like this one. It's really one of those things that, you know, you as the consumer really has to, like, go out and, and view on, like, YouTube, watch gameplay videos, you know, you know, check out reviews left and right, um, or just straight up go to them. You know, TCA has always had this super awesome inclusion as to, like, what you can do. And I saw somebody cut through a wall with, like, power tools at one of their events. You know, there are events that have, like, helicopters, and there are events that have, like, actual, like, on staff military personnel like like uh milson west has a full their cadre is all you know military like either current or inactive military um that really enhance the game um mirror tactical always gets like awesome fields like awesome locations airsoft republic the same they have awesome fields and they're a great bunch of dudes and they're like new and fresh and they're available to like people of all different you know like skills and abilities um, so it's really, you know, it's, it's really hard for us to go straight down the line and be like, this is better, best, you know, like we'll leave that to Olive Garden. But to be honest, you know, it's really up for you to decide. And the only way that you can do that is by getting out, going and playing and just doing the research on your own, you know? Um, but I will say, you know, obviously you can listen to us or you can, you can, Go do it. Go do it. Yeah. Because so. definitely it's 100% player dependent. You know, each one of those offerings, like everybody that, you know, puts on events, they have different styles in the sense of their time. You know, some, like for example, Milson West is like 48 hours. Um, you have the Lion Claw games, which usually are like three games throughout the day at different times, but you also have breaks in between. AMS is very similar to that as well. Mirror is similar. Or, um, a Oh my gosh. ASR. ASR is similar to that. Um, and then you also have like the survival aspect games, which are like very immersive. Um, so like it, definitely try everything, you know, figure out what you like. And then, you know, if you, you know, if the survival thing's not your cup of tea, then you only went one weekend. At least you got to see it. Um, and you can use that to grow your experience and your um, taste for what you want to see at a game. So... That's definitely what I've There's recommend. a bunch of different flavors, so everybody's going to like something different. Yep. But that is the last question. Uh, all that's left in there is a candy wrapper, and Kurt's now got to eat it. So uh, thank you so much for watching. That didn't taste good. Um, we're going to do one of these a week, and we're very excited to be doing them again. And we... Every other week? Well, you could have said that. Yeah, we're... We're going to do we're, these. We're deciding we're, how to do them. Um, we're going to do them. So at the max, it'd be once a week, but more than likely, it's going to be every other week. Yeah, um, and then, if you know, see how things go. The but, term um, is sporadic, so... For those of you tuning in and watched, um, definitely for next time, please leave comments in the or questions in the comments below. Um, that's where we're going to get our questions from. We'll probably post up on Instagram asking questions as well um, and Facebook. So definitely post up any questions you have. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll try our best to answer them. So, and... Uh, Definitely thank you for all your support. If you ever need us for anything, you know, definitely shoot us an email at sales at ampedairsoft.com. Check us out online. Um, or you can shoot us Facebook messages. You can call anyway, us, too. Call us. We have a phone number. So, but yeah, definitely want to thank you for all your support. And um, we'll see you next time.